This is a quick little video to correct the really big error I made in the rates calculation. I mean it's an easy enough error to make but even when I said all those figures I just still found it a little bit unbelievable. So I actually went and did a lot of researching and trying to find out and still couldn't find any variance on it and then it came down to a very simple matter of the rates calculations in that when you look at 0 0.4306 you think okay so that's for you just take that across 0 0.4306 multiplied by the valuation um, not that I did it in that circumstance I used the residential rate but as it turns out that is actually 0.4306 of a cent in the dollar. So for every dollar it's under a cent. It's not even, it's under half a cent. So that's where there was a gross <laughs> miscalculation made. Instead of having uh, as should be correctly 0.004306 when I got it to auto calculate the numbers I put in 0 0.4306 which in actual fact is something that the council should actually do when they put on their website that it's 0 0.004 and then multiply your dollar value they would make it so much less confusing I took it literal in the sense of you look at something like that and that's like um, 40 cents and you see the cents there and you think yes it is 40 cents but it's 0.4 of a cent in the dollar and that actually brings the rates down to what is actually realistic because I've paid rates I know that the rates I was looking at was you could pay for the value of your property within a few years and it just didn't make sense and thanks to the help of a few people that actually said well our rates in the area are nowhere like that and it's like yes I, I know I've already made this mistake and I need to correct it and inform people that it's not in the millions. In fact, it is actually quite reasonable. When you calculate all the properties, uh, you get an annual rates of, say, 30,000 quarterly, seven and a half. That's with all the ones that I've got noted on here. And uh, that's actually more realistic. And so I'm happy with those figures. Now those figures that I've actually given, there's three rates on the council website. There's business, residential and farmland. Now in certain circumstances that I know that 3222 have got a pick number and that they've actually got one for livestock even though they've actually made reference to harvesting. Harvesting is a little bit of a difference to livestock. I don't know where they've been harvesting on 3222 but this comes from directly inside the database for the personal identification um, whatever the C stands for I can't remember it now but it's a pick number that cattle get tagged with it. Uh, you can't transport any cattle without that pick number. They had one at Bulla Bulla and that one that they had at Bulla Bulla is still active and uh, somebody that has actually got access to that database because they've got a log on and everything, they actually said that it shows that there was harvesting going on. So, And the question they said to me is, well, they've got permission for livestock but I don't know about the harvesting. So... Uh, yes, that's just a, a few things that I've been trying to check into because there were things about whether the land is classified as farmland and there are a lot of people that can actually, with their uh, businesses, actually claim it as, and I say businesses, 
because a farm is considered a business these days, but it, you can farm lots of different things. <laughs> you know, you can farm any kind of livestock or breeding or um, you can farm agriculture, grow things. There's many beekeeper, um, you know, so there's lots of different things that can actually come under the category of farmland. But you also have to show that the land's been used for that and then you get the cheaper rates. So where I know that there may be the possibility, I give the variation. So um, ultimately when I've given this calculation here, I'll come back up. Um, I've taken what I thought would actually be the most logical thing. Now, um, NCV Enterprises at 3222 are actually claiming that they are some kind of a farm. They've got livestock, so thereby they are trying to substantiate the farmland rate. So I've applied the farmland rate, the cheapest rate that you can actually get. Now, one thing I also found out too is that there's another thing that's associated with the Department of Primary Industries and the, the oh, I can't remember the name of it now. It's some other land council or something where because of your activities in the farmland side of it, you also get something that you have to pay on that side of it. Uh, it's according to what kind of... Uh, farming uh, activities actually going on. So I'm not too sure on that. I've only just sort of looked, started looking into that. So, um, so thankfully it's not <laughs> 3.2 million. And when I use a variance and I actually have found out more what these businesses would be classified as, like Dove Cooks up here he would classify that as farmland because that's where he would say that he's growing his uh, industrial hemp crop. So uh, that would be farmland. So that's why it's dropped down. But if you took all the calculations that I made and took the zero, um, the decimal point, I mean, a few points to the, the right, um, yes, it was much more reasonable. Sorry to scare everybody, especially potential investors there. Don't worry, you don't have to come up with 3.2 million, but you still have to come up with a miracle to get it uh, development approved and everything like that. But yes, it's most definitely not something that you're going to have to take out a loan to pay your rates every year because that's the way I looked at them. It was just like I knew they couldn't be right. I knew there had to be something that was wrong with them because the the numbers were just way, way too big. You know, as I said, that you could pay off the valuation within a few years of rates at that rate. So, no. I've corrected my mistake, and I'm sorry that if I've confused anybody. And, uh, yes, well, <laughs> I'll leave it at that and catch you on the next one, shall I? And let's hope I get it right. <laughs> Yeah, right before I say something instead of, oh, look, I'm just going to turn around and correct myself now. But never be too proud to say you're wrong. We're all human. We make mistakes. I made a silly mistake when I looked at it because of the way they presented it. You take chunks of information and you're used to dealing it with it in certain ways. And yes, it was just one of those oversights. If I had moved the decimal point a few places, as I have done now, I would have been right. But as I say, it's far better to find your mistakes and correct them than to let them go on <laughs> uncorrected. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Hope I've solved that and it's as clear as mud now. <laughs> okay, catch you next time. Bye.